As you were saying, Neil, just a few hours ago, India's space agency launched a rocket that will attempt to land a spacecraft at the lunar South Pole, which is an unprecedented feat and would advance India's position as a major space power. Well, that's right. Uh, you know, Chandrayaan-2 was the previous attempt, which uh, just just before landing, we lost uh, uh, the connection. And, and then, you know, when, when you lose out on such important uh, moments of uh, a project like this, a mammoth pro- project like this, it doesn't really deter the mindset. In fact, makes the resolve all the more stronger and that's what the Indian Space Research Organization has done, Kitch. Yeah, this is, it truly is uh, our momentum day. We're looking at this uh, robotic lander and rover uh, that if it lands intact will be an accomplishment that no country other than China has pulled off this century. That's right. And to discuss more about this, we've been joined by a legendary man. He's an Indian uh, aerospace scientist who's worked with the ISRO and contributed significantly to the Indian Space Program by developing the Vikas rocket engine. The man... The myth is with us, Mr. Nambi Narayanan, joining on TSB. Dr. Nambi, welcome to Talk Sport and Business. I'm Neil with me, Sketch. Yeah, good evening. How are you? You're doing extremely well and extremely excited. How, how's your feeling been? Have you been watching every single movement of the Chandrayaan 3? Yeah, I have been watching it. It is interesting. Mm-hmm. And uh, nice to watch uh, because things are going as planned. And uh, as per expectation, things are moving. Right. You, you know, uh, what is the, the categorical difference between Chandrayaan 2 and Chandrayaan 3? Yeah, basically we had a problem with Chandrayaan 2. Mm-hmm. We had a software problem and uh, we had some mechanical problems. I'm not going to go into details of it. Sure. These problems were uh, taken care after the failure analysis committee recommended certain actions to be taken. Mm-hmm. And uh, I understand from reliable sources, they were all taken care. And then, uh, so in other words, the shortfalls are taken care. So that means there should not be any problem with respect to Sandra entry. This is this is interesting. And like like you very mentioned, uh, very like you mentioned very briefly that uh, the shortcomings have been taken care of. But also uh, a, a a difference between the two, like as compared to the uh, the previous one, uh, Chandrayaan two. Here we do not have uh, an, a navigator, right? We we just have the rocket and the uh, rover. Is it true? You do not have an orbiter. Okay. And the orbiter is the one which was used in the first flight. Mm-hmm. And uh, that is still working there. So we got rid of the orbiter. They are making use of the old orbiter. Oh, okay. And and uh, that's all the difference. I mean, uh, which which enabled us to have some little more weight for the overall payload. Mm-hmm. So that was useful. They they normally say that, that you know going to the dark side of moon is always challenging. Why? What what is the difference? I mean, if you could tell us, you know, we we well, definitely are not uh, scientists. <laughs> Well, you need not be a scientist to know that it is something like this, you know, when everybody goes to some direction mm-hmm. and a lot of data is available in that direction, then I thought I'll do something different. It's not me. It is somebody else who decided that they will go to the darker side of the moon. And you have tremendous uh, worst climate conditions, temperatures are low. And uh, uh, so we thought, okay, we will learn something by going there. In any way, you have to land somewhere in the moon. You can't <laughs> say that I won't land. True. <laughs> when it comes down, yeah. when it comes down to uh, the three other space agencies, the United States, the former Soviet Union, and China, uh, they have touched down a lander on the moon surface, but none have landed near the lunar South Pole. Is there a reason for that? The the that why that this is this is such a momentous I, to go honestly, to this area? I, uh, yeah, honestly, I I I don't know. All I know is. That when everybody has gone to one side, I thought uh, I thought at least that is, that could be the reason why 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 not we try the other side? Why is nobody else has done it? Mm-hmm. So that is one one reason. Another reason is uh, the darker side with the worst climatic conditions. We thought we will familiarize with that. We will make our peace to withstand such uh, tremendous conditions, mm-hmm. so that uh, it gives us a better tolerable uh, uh, things in that uh, process. I think these are the two reasons. I don't find any other reason for that. Mm-hmm. Now, there, there's one more, uh, you know, question that comes to our mind whenever we've watched any Mars mission being sent. Uh, they normally, when when the landing happens, they normally land using a parachute, right? 
the same is not used for lunar landings is there a specific reason is it the gravity that plays a role no but gravity is not sufficient because you have no air no atmospheric air to inflate a parachute and then come down so okay. what you have to do is a retro rocket mm-hmm. to to you know you have to apply the force from up down to upwards okay uh, slightly less than that of the force which is coming with which it is coming down mm-hmm. so that uh, it comes uh, something like a you know soft landing right so so b- basically we we use the the newton's laws of uh, uh, inertia but with with a differential uh, uh, f- uh, force that is applied up as compared to the gravitational force yeah yeah sure sure sure, sure. yeah india has successfully launched satellites for itself and other countries since the 1960s but can you see this being part of a a renewed growth in the space sector for india in the coming years well uh Okay, can you repeat that question? I didn't get your question properly. Well, do you think this is the start of many great, great things for India's uh, India's uh, space sector? Will there be more money and more funds spent on 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 India going into space? Yeah, if you if you have more money, then suddenly you won't have to make a number of pieces. You can uh, you don't have to wait for four years to come to the next launch. Right. And uh, so you know these are advantages with a lot of money, but we don't have that kind of money to spend. I mean, yeah, we know so, our, our our film industry spends same amount of money to make one movie as compared to what the budget is required for one uh, uh, moon mission, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's what they said. They were that. Yeah. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Now we breathe. He's obviously a very, very busy man at the moment. I mean, this is a momentous day, and there's, uh, you know, he's needed in a lot of sectors. Well, I'm, I'm so sure he is, and keeping an eye on so many other developments that are happening. Um, I'm, I'm so glad that we got at least a couple of minutes and a little more from him. Yeah, and and uh, if you've got any questions yourself, um, but we'll try and answer them uh, if uh, we yeah, don't have an expert okay. available to us. Zero five eight six eight six one zero zero three. We can't take away from this. It really is an historic day uh, that we'll see the attempt to land a spacecraft at the lunar south pole an unprecedented feat that really does advance india's position as a major space power